Hi everybody, it's Stephanie B here from Career Makeover Academy and today's topic of discussion is an anonymously submitted question and this person wanted to know how to quit your job gracefully. So we'll be giving that a bit of a discussion today. I'm not sure how many people are on. My computer's acting weird again. I'm always having tech problems, I swear. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first thing I want to tell you is that if you want to quit your job gracefully, you are definitely 100% not going to not piss people off. Some of these people, your boss, your coworkers, they're going to feel slightly abandoned. So whether it's because they consider you to be a close like, you know, a close friend or like almost like a family member, they rely on you, or just because they're jealous, most likely a lot of these people are going to be kind of peeved. So don't leave a job or don't expect to leave a job and have everybody be super excited for you. All right? That's just human nature. A lot of these people are actually going to be jealous that you're getting out of there and moving on to bigger and better things, and they're stuck. So that's the first thing to be said. But the second thing to be said is that it is possible to leave the job and exit the office, the workspace, gracefully, and make sure that you at least ensure that you have the possibility of returning to that place in the future if necessary or possible. So the very first thing we're going to do is talk about creating an exit plan. And the first part of that exit plan is going to be setting a goal date. So the goal date is important not just because you're creating a goal date to leave your job and possibly like start a new job. You are also setting up a goal date that you need to get all of your skills and requirements met, right? So you've, you're developing this exit plan presumably because you want to leave your job, which means that you have some vague idea of where you want to end up. So you have to create a plan. So that goal date is not going to just be you leaving. It's going to be that you've got the education, you've gotten the mentors, you've gotten you know, the skills that you need in order to succeed in your next venture. So the second thing that you need to, to, to keep in mind is a budget. All right, Budgeting is super important because you've become to rely on that salary that you've had, presumably. You have set expenses every month. And what you need to do is make sure that you're prepared not just with savings for you know the immediate future, but you have possibility of either making more money or knowing that you have paid off enough of your debts that you will not go bankrupt if you are not able to find something in the immediate future. Or if, I mean, it has happened, you go to a new place and then you know you don't make that three month cutoff and then they let you go. Because you weren't you weren't you know planning for that. Usually you're not like super excited to move to a new job and then bam, you don't have any money coming in three months later. So you need to make sure that you have your budget. Um, you have to make sure you know about all of your monthly expenses and plan for those little things that come up, those hiccups like car problems or medical expenses, and make sure that you are not caught completely unprepared because that can be a huge detriment to you. And it also gives you a good psychological edge because you know that regardless of how things pan, pan out, you are not desperate and you are not forced to do things that you don't want to or shouldn't do just because you didn't budget accordingly. So another thing that you want to do is, and this is back at the actual office itself, clean out your desk. And by clean out your desk, I mean get rid of everything personal. Make sure that you have everything, all your ducks in a row, everything lined up. You don't want it to be that you give your notice and then security comes to escort you out and you've lost like the teddy bear that your boyfriend gave you for Valentine's Day because it didn't get put into the box by HR. I mean, there are times that you have certain personal items that don't seem like personal items, like you bring post-it notes or little things like that. You may have 20 to $50 worth of stuff in your desk that I mean, people would just think is junk, but it's not actually junk to you, right? I mean, most people consider post-it notes a little bit junky, but you really want to make sure that your desk and your office space are cleaned out. You don't want to have to lug a giant box out of the office with you the day that you leave. Just make sure that, that that's one of the things about exiting gracefully. It means that you have planned. Hey, how are you, Lorraine? She gave a little LOL. And Lindsay says, hey, hey. How are you doing, guys? Hope you're doing well today. Um, so that's kind of the end of, like, you know, cleaning out the desk. It's just another thing, too, is that cleaning up your desk isn't just getting your stuff boxed away or uh, get your stuff taken care of, on a, you know, so you're not carrying this giant box with you. It's also making sure you clear all of your personal and professional information off of your computer, right? So you may have 
you know, or your, your files too, because you may have like, you know, your, some real estate or car thing that you shoved in your, in your desk at one point or some important paperwork that's sitting there just in a drawer, as well as you may have some personal stuff like pictures or um, emails that were sent to you personally through your, your work email account or files that you downloaded. You don't want those there because you may lose them forever. Once you're at, not at that company anymore, whether it's because you decide to leave the company or because you decide to leave and they escort you off the premises immediately, you, you lose that stuff. So, I mean, if you want to actually keep those things, you want to make sure that you take that extra course of action. So now we'll move on to tip number four, and that is reviewing your corporate documentation. So almost every one of us has a corporate handbook that we receive and review when we get there, we have to sign off. It basically says don't wear halter tops or, you know, don't punch people in the face in the parking lot. You know, you have this, you know, giant tome that you have to read and digest. So one of the things you need to do when you're, when, you, when you're leaving is make sure that you review it so that you can make sure that you're not going to do anything to violate that agreement. Because just because you leave doesn't necessarily mean that you can do certain things. They may have a non-compete clause, which means that you can't work in the same industry for like up to two years, whether you know, you're actually with that company or not. So these are things that you need to know because those can be legally binding. You did sign a piece of paper saying you read and acknowledged it, presumably, which means that if you don't follow through, you could get into some major trouble. Okay, so the very last thing I'm gonna say on this matter is to collect your praise. So all of those people that were telling you these wonderful things, oh, bye Lindsay, she has to leave. Uh, so all of these people that were telling you these wonderful things throughout the course of your career, telling you what a great job you were doing, how wonderful it was to work with you, all of those things that got you those bonuses and raises at your annual review, those are things that you are going to want to collect. You want to have on time and date stamps. You want to have all this information at your disposal. You also want to try to speak with people that you're working with, any managers or coworkers that you've worked on projects with, and see if you can get them to give you... Um, some kind of you know written praise whether it's like a letter of recommendation or have them go on a LinkedIn and say something nice about you and how wonderful you were to work with how thorough you were how you always went above and beyond all of things these things will help you because a I'll tell you how many times have you asked somebody for a reference and they just point blank said no never so if you can get these people to write a reference for you or get them to put something on LinkedIn it's that human psychology is such that, I mean, unless they absolutely hate you, in which case you wouldn't ask anyway, they would be more than happy to help you out because it makes them feel good knowing that they helped you. I mean, obviously, you're not going to go and ask your boss three weeks before you've given your notice if he'll write something nice about you on LinkedIn because that's kind of a really big clue that you're going to be leaving. But you do want to put yourself into a position where you would get as much of that praise as possible written down in some format. You want them to be talking about your skills. You want to get those references. You want to get any contact information so that once you've left, you always have that available for when you're looking for your next job. You have a, an abundance of people that are more than happy to talk about what a wonderful employee you are. So these are my five steps for a great exit plan, and I hope that this serves you well, and I hope that you are able to use these tips and tricks to make sure that the next time that you are leaving a company, you can exit gracefully and put yourself into a position where you are not pissing off your boss and employees and not burning bridges as much as you can, as well as protecting your own assets and protecting your future. So I wanted to keep this short and sweet. If you guys have any questions, I see Lorraine is still, oh, she said thank you. You're very welcome, Lorraine. I hope that this helped. Do you have any questions? Okay, so there's a little bit of a delay, so I don't think there are any questions, but if there are any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments, and I will either do another Facebook Live or answer your questions directly. So thank you so much, guys. I just want to say have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.